Protecting his own power and preserving public order were now his highest priorities. And Caiaphas knew that Jesus must die. In the heart of ancient Jerusalem, a city steeped in history and religious fervor, a powerful figure named Joseph Caiaphas rose to prominence. As a high priest, he held a position of great importance, leading the Jewish people in their spiritual and political lives. But Caiaphas was not without controversy. His actions and decisions would shape the course of history, and his legacy remains a subject of intense debate to this day. What was it about this man that made him so influential? And what drove him to make the choices he did? In the heart of ancient Judea, a land full of unrest and caught between the strict rule of Rome and the strong faith of its Jewish people, a man named Caiaphas emerged. Imagine stepping back into Jerusalem's lively markets, where whispers of rebellion against the Romans mixed with the smell of spices and the noise of daily life. This was Caiaphas's world, a place where politics and religion were deeply connected and power and faith were closely linked. Caiaphas was born into a prestigious family of priests and grew up near the magnificent temple, its towering walls constantly reminding him of his sacred heritage. From a young age, he was immersed in the complex rituals and ancient laws that governed Jewish life, absorbing the wisdom passed down through generations. However, becoming the high priest, the highest religious authority, required more than just knowledge and piety. It demanded a sharp mind, a knack for navigating political intrigue, and an unwavering ambition. The path to becoming a high priest was not easy. Caiaphas, a young man with exceptional intelligence and relentless ambition, set his sights on the highest office with a burning desire to shape his people's destiny. He carefully climbed the ranks of the priesthood, forming alliances with influential families, outmaneuvering rivals, and proving his worth at every step. Though his ascent was marked by setbacks and disappointments, Caiaphas remained determined. In 18 CE, after years of tireless effort and unwavering determination, Caiaphas finally achieved his dream. He was appointed high priest by the Roman governor, Valerius Gratus, a savvy politician who saw Caiaphas's potential to maintain order in the region. This marked the beginning of an extraordinary 18-year tenure, showcasing Caiaphas's ability to navigate the complex interests of both the Jewish people and their Roman rulers. As a high priest, Caiaphas was more than just a religious leader. He was a powerful political figure, a skilled diplomat with immense influence over his people's lives. He led the Sanhedrin, the highest Jewish council and court, making decisions on law and faith. He managed the temple's vast treasury, a symbol of Jewish wealth and power, and maintained close ties with Roman authorities to ensure a fragile peace. However, Caiaphas's rule was anything but peaceful. The Jewish people, oppressed by Roman rule, longed for a messiah to free them from tyranny. Secretive revolutionaries plotted for freedom, while the Romans, vigilant for signs of rebellion, were ready to crush any uprising. Caught in the middle, Caiaphas had to balance the demands of his people with the expectations of the Romans, striving to maintain order while upholding his faith's traditions. Throughout his long tenure, Caiaphas's actions sparked both admiration and resentment. Some viewed him as a collaborator, too willing to sacrifice his people's interests for personal gain. Others saw him as a pragmatist who understood the need to maintain peace at any cost. Despite the differing opinions, Caiaphas's legacy remains one of complexity and controversy. His ambition and political skill left a lasting impact on Jewish history, shaping events that eventually led to the Second Temple's destruction and the Jewish people's dispersion. Amidst the swirling turmoil of Roman-occupied Judea, a land teeming with religious fervor and simmering rebellion, a new figure emerged, capturing the hearts and minds of the people. Jesus of Nazareth, 
a charismatic preacher from the humble region of Galilee, ignited a spark that would soon engulf the entire nation. And Caiaphas, the high priest, found himself at the epicenter of this seismic shift. Initially, perhaps, Caiaphas dismissed the rumors of this itinerant teacher as nothing more than idle gossip. But as Jesus' popularity soared and his teachings challenged the very foundations of the temple's authority, Caiaphas grew increasingly uneasy. He couldn't ignore the groundswell of support for this enigmatic figure, whose message of love, compassion, and social justice resonated deeply with the oppressed masses. Caiaphas must have been troubled by the reports that flooded in from every corner of the land. Tales of Jesus healing the sick, casting out demons, and even raising the dead reached his ears, causing a mixture of disbelief and trepidation. But it was Jesus' bold pronouncements that truly shook Caiaphas to his core. This Galilean preacher spoke of a direct connection with God, a relationship unmediated by the elaborate rituals and sacrifices that were the lifeblood of the temple. He denounced the hypocrisy and corruption of the religious elite, calling for a return to the true spirit of the law. As Jesus' influence grew, so too did the crowds that flocked to hear him speak. They came from all walks of life, drawn by his charisma and the hope he offered for a better future. They listened with rapt attention as he preached about the kingdom of God, a realm of justice, peace, and equality. Caiaphas watched these gatherings with mounting apprehension, aware of the potential danger they posed. The high priest was not alone in his concern. Late into the night, he huddled with his fellow religious leaders debating the best course of action. They recognized the threat that Jesus posed to their power and authority. His message was a direct challenge to the status quo, a clarion call for change that could upend the delicate balance they had worked so hard to maintain. But Caiaphas's motives were not purely self-serving. He was, after all, the high priest, charged with upholding the sanctity of the temple and preserving the traditions of his faith. He saw Jesus' actions, such as his dramatic cleansing of the temple, as a direct affront to God's house and a threat to the religious order. Moreover, he feared that Jesus' growing popularity could provoke a violent backlash from the Romans, who would not hesitate to crush any perceived rebellion. As the Passover festival approached, Jerusalem became a cauldron of conflicting emotions. Pilgrims poured into the city, their hearts filled with both religious devotion and nationalistic fervor. The atmosphere was electric, charged with anticipation and unease. Caiaphas knew that he had to act decisively to prevent the situation from spiraling out of control. In a fateful meeting with the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council, Caiaphas delivered a chilling pronouncement. He argued that it was better for one man to die than for the entire nation to perish. This statement, recorded in the Gospel of John, reveals the high priest's pragmatism and his willingness to sacrifice an individual for the sake of the collective. With the decision made, Caiaphas and his cohorts set their plan in motion. They sought to apprehend Jesus secretly under cover of darkness to avoid a public outcry. They found an unlikely ally in Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' own disciples, who agreed to betray his teacher for 30 pieces of silver. The stage was set for a tragic confrontation, a clash between two powerful forces that would shape the course of history. Imagine a secret meeting taking place under the cover of darkness. Judas, one of Jesus' trusted disciples, huddled with the religious elite, a shadowy figure betraying his friend for a handful of silver coins. The air crackled with tension as whispers filled the dimly lit room, plans hatched in hushed tones. Caiaphas, the high priest, watched the scene unfold with a mix of anticipation and anxiety. The pieces were falling into place, but the uncertainty of the outcome gnawed at him. 
the fateful night arrived, and under the cloak of darkness, a group of temple guards, armed with swords and torches, descended upon the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas, their guide, led them straight to Jesus, his face a mask of treachery. The peaceful tranquility of the garden was shattered as the guards seized Jesus, their rough hands tearing him away from his bewildered followers. The scene was one of chaos and confusion, with shouts echoing through the night and the flickering torchlight casting eerie shadows. Jesus was dragged before Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin, the highest Jewish council. Imagine the scene, a dimly lit chamber, filled with stern-faced men in flowing robes, their eyes fixed on the accused. Caiaphas, a figure of authority and power, presided over the proceedings, his voice echoing through the hushed room. The Gospel accounts tell us that Caiaphas directly confronted Jesus, demanding to know if he claimed to be the long-awaited Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus' response, whatever it may have been, was deemed blasphemous by the council, and Caiaphas, in a dramatic gesture of outrage, tore his garments, a symbolic act of condemnation. But Caiaphas knew that the Sanhedrin's power was limited. They could not carry out a death sentence without the approval of the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. So, in the early hours of the morning, Jesus was taken to Pilate's headquarters, a cold, imposing structure where Roman law held sway. Here, Caiaphas's political savvy came to the fore. He understood that the charge of blasphemy, while deeply offensive to the Jewish leaders, would carry little weight with the Romans. Instead, he presented Jesus as a dangerous political revolutionary, a self-proclaimed king who threatened to destabilize the region and incite rebellion against Roman rule. Caiaphas's strategy worked. Pilate, a pragmatic politician eager to maintain order, was swayed by the accusations. Despite his own reservations, he ultimately caved to the pressure and ordered Jesus' crucifixion. Caiaphas had seemingly triumphed, eliminating the perceived threat to his authority and the delicate balance he had worked so hard to maintain. But Caiaphas's victory was short-lived. He had underestimated the power of Jesus' message and the unwavering loyalty of his followers. The crucifixion, far from extinguishing the movement, ignited it. As news of Jesus' resurrection spread like wildfire, his disciples grew bolder, their faith emboldened by the miraculous events they had witnessed. Caiaphas and the religious leaders found themselves facing a new and even more formidable challenge. They had hoped to silence a single voice, but they had inadvertently unleashed a movement that would transform the world. The consequences of their actions would reverberate through the ages, forever altering the course of history and casting a long shadow over Caiaphas's legacy. In the immediate aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion, Caiaphas likely felt a sense of relief and vindication. He had successfully neutralized a perceived threat to his power and authority. However, as the days turned into weeks and the Jesus movement continued to gain momentum, he must have realized that his problems were far from over. The events of that fateful Passover had unleashed a force that he could not control a force that would ultimately challenge the very foundations of the religious and political order he had sought to protect. After the crucifixion of Jesus, Caiaphas probably thought that life would go back to normal. He figured that by getting rid of Jesus, he had put a stop to any trouble that might have been brewing. But boy, was he wrong. Word on the street was that Jesus had come back to life. Stories of his resurrection spread like wildfire and more and more people were joining his movement. Caiaphas must have been scratching his head, wondering how things could have gone so wrong. He had bet everything on Jesus being gone for good, but it seemed like the opposite was happening. In fact, the followers of Jesus were becoming bolder by the day. They started preaching right in the temple, Caiaphas's home turf. It was a slap in the face to the high priest 
a direct challenge to his authority. But Caiaphas wasn't one to back down. He and the other religious leaders tried everything to shut them up. They threw them in jail, threatened them, and even had them whipped. But nothing worked. The more they tried to stop them, the more popular they became. Caiaphas must have been pulling his hair out in frustration. He was used to being the big shot, the one calling the shots. Now, he was dealing with a bunch of everyday folks who wouldn't be silenced, no matter what he threw at them. But it wasn't just the growing popularity of the Jesus movement that was causing Caiaphas headaches. His reputation had taken a serious hit. People remembered how he had acted during Jesus' trial and crucifixion. Even those who weren't followers of Jesus thought he had gone too far. After all, Passover was supposed to be a time of celebration, not a time for violence and division. And Caiaphas's cozy relationship with the Romans didn't sit well with folks who wanted to be free from their rule. Caiaphas was caught between a rock and a hard place. He needed the support of the people to keep his job, but he had alienated many of them, and he needed to stay on good terms with the Romans to stay in power. It was like trying to juggle chainsaws, a risky business. Despite all this, Caiaphas somehow managed to hang on to his position for a few more years. But his days were numbered. The movement he had tried to crush was only getting stronger, and his grip on power was slipping away. In the year 36 CE, about three years after Jesus' death, Caiaphas was finally kicked out of office. No one knows for sure why, but it's likely that his mishandling of the Jesus situation, along with some political maneuvering, played a role. This must have been a real blow to Caiaphas. He had spent his entire life climbing the ladder of power, only to be knocked off the top. As he walked away from the temple, he probably wondered if he had made the right choices. Could things have turned out differently if he had taken another path? Even though Caiaphas was out of the picture, the impact of his actions continued to ripple outward. The Jesus movement spread far beyond Jerusalem, reaching across Judea and into the wider Roman world. One can only imagine what thoughts went through Caiaphas's mind as he watched this happen. What did he do after losing his position? We don't know for sure, but one thing is certain. The story of Caiaphas is a reminder that even the most powerful figures can make decisions with unintended consequences. Decisions that can change the world in ways they never imagined. In the centuries that followed Caiaphas's tenure as high priest, his name became inseparable from the trial and crucifixion of Jesus echoing through the corridors of history. In 1990, a remarkable archaeological discovery shed new light on this enigmatic figure. In a burial cave nestled within Jerusalem's Peace Forest, archaeologists unearthed an ossuary, a limestone box designed to hold bones, bearing an inscription that sent shockwaves through the academic world. Joseph, son of Caiaphas. This name was believed to refer to the very same Caiaphas mentioned in the New Testament, the high priest who presided over Jesus' trial. This discovery was a game changer, providing tangible evidence of Caiaphas' existence as a historical figure rather than merely a character confined to religious texts. The ossuary's ornate decorations, featuring intricate floral patterns, hinted at Caiaphas's elevated social standing in Jerusalem society, solidifying the notion that he was a member of a wealthy and influential family. But the Caiaphas ossuary wasn't the only archaeological find to shed light on this intriguing figure. Ancient steps leading to what is believed to be Caiaphas's house on Mount Zion were also unearthed. These weathered stones are thought to be the very same ones that Jesus ascended when he was brought before Caiaphas for questioning. Today, walking these steps offers visitors a tangible connection to the dramatic events described in the Gospels. The site, now known as the Church of St. Peter in Galicantu, has long been a pilgrimage destination for those seeking to retrace the footsteps of Jesus. 
Excavations in the area have revealed a complex of ruins dating back to the first century, including a possible guardroom and even a dungeon. While it cannot be definitively confirmed that this was indeed Caiaphas's residence, the archaeological evidence strongly suggests that it belonged to a prominent figure during Jesus's time. Beyond the tangible remnants of the past, historical writings offer valuable insights into the enigmatic figure of Caiaphas. The renowned Jewish historian Josephus mentions Caiaphas multiple times in his works, confirming his lengthy 18-year tenure as high priest from 18 to 36 CE. Josephus's writings provide crucial context about the turbulent political climate of the time, painting a vivid picture of the immense pressures and challenges Caiaphas would have faced. In his seminal work, Antiquities of the Jews, Josephus reveals that Caiaphas was handpicked for the esteemed position of high priest by the Roman prefect Valerius Gratus, who preceded Pontius Pilate. This appointment underscores the intricate and often fraught relationship between Jewish religious authorities and Roman political power. In this era, the selection of high priests was no longer solely based on religious merit, but also hinged on their ability to maintain order and cooperate with the Roman overlords. Josephus also chronicles Caiaphas's removal from office in 36 CE by the Syrian governor Vitellius. This event coincided with Pontius Pilate's recall of Rome, suggesting a significant shift in Roman policy towards Judea. Caiaphas's unusually long tenure as high priest, a stark contrast to the fleeting terms of his predecessors, serves as a testament to his exceptional political savvy and ability to navigate the treacherous waters of his time. The New Testament, particularly the Gospels and the Book of Acts, provides another lens through which to view Caiaphas, albeit from a distinctly Christian perspective. These accounts cast Caiaphas as a central antagonist in the events leading to Jesus' crucifixion portraying him as the orchestrator of the plot against Jesus and the driving force behind his condemnation. While these texts may not be entirely objective historical documents, they offer invaluable glimpses into how early Christians perceived Caiaphas and the religious establishment he represented. One of the most memorable quotes attributed to Caiaphas comes from the Gospel of John, where he declares, it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. This chilling statement has been the subject of endless theological discussions and historical interpretations. Some view it as a cold, calculated political maneuver, while others interpret it as an unwitting prophecy of Jesus' sacrificial death. However, Caiaphas's legacy extends far beyond archaeological artifacts and historical records. His actions, as depicted in the New Testament, have fueled theological debates and shaped Christian traditions for centuries. While he is often portrayed as a villainous figure responsible for Jesus' death, some scholars advocate for a more nuanced understanding of his motivations, viewing him as a complex and conflicted individual caught between competing loyalties to his faith, his people, and the Roman authorities. Caiaphas remains a controversial and enigmatic figure, his name forever intertwined with one of the most pivotal events in human history. Whether viewed as a villain, a pragmatist, or a tragic figure caught in the crosshairs of history, his story serves as a stark reminder of the enduring power of faith, the complexities of political power, and the profound consequences of human choices. In Jewish historical accounts, Caiaphas isn't always seen as a bad guy. He's often viewed as just another high priest who had to deal with the challenges of living under Roman rule. Some Jewish scholars even think that his long time as a high priest shows how good he was at keeping things stable during a very chaotic time. This was a big deal, especially considering the constant threat of rebellion and the careful balance of power between Jewish leaders and the Romans who ruled over them. To really understand Caiaphas, we have to look at the world he lived in. 
First century Judea was a place full of political and religious tension. The Jewish people weren't happy living under Roman control, and they were eagerly awaiting a savior. Different Jewish groups like the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and others were all competing for power. As the high priest and head honcho of the Sanhedrin, Caiaphas had to deal with these internal squabbles while also keeping the peace with Rome. Archaeological digs have given us a ton of information about daily life in Jerusalem when Caiaphas was alive. The city was getting a major facelift under Herod the Great and his successors. The temple, the heart of Jewish religious life, was a massive structure that towered over everything else. Recent excavations in the city of David and around the Temple Mount have uncovered streets, houses, and ritual baths, mikveh's, that Caiaphas and his fellow Jerusalemites would have known well. Caiaphas's story has also made its way into art and literature throughout history. He pops up as a character in tons of paintings, plays, and movies about the life of Jesus. These portrayals have really shaped how people see Caiaphas, often focusing on his role in condemning Jesus. He's been depicted in all sorts of ways, from a simple baddie in medieval passion plays to a more complex character torn between duty and conscience in modern films. Lately, Caiaphas has become a hot topic for historians and archaeologists who are studying the political and religious scene in first century Judea. By looking closely at Caiaphas's role and actions, scholars have learned a lot about the tricky relationship between Jewish religious leaders and Roman political power during this crucial time in history. Caiaphas's legacy is a good reminder of how one person in history can have a huge and lasting impact. His story is intertwined with one of the most important events in religious history and continues to intrigue both scholars and regular folks alike. Ongoing archaeological work in Jerusalem and the surrounding areas promises to shed even more light on Caiaphas and his world in the years to come. One area researchers are digging into is the study of ancient Jewish priestly families. Genetic studies of modern-day people claiming to be descended from these ancient priests, particularly those with the Cohen surname, have found a common genetic link, suggesting they share ancestry going way back. While we can't directly tie this to Caiaphas, it does open up some interesting possibilities for understanding the priestly families of his time. Another research focus is looking at ancient texts beyond the Bible and the works of Josephus. The Dead Sea Scrolls, for example, offer valuable insights into the diverse religious beliefs of first century Judaism. While they don't mention Caiaphas directly, they help us understand the theological debates and power struggles that would have influenced his world. But questions remain. How accurate are the Gospel accounts of Caiaphas's role in Jesus' trial? What more might we discover about his life and times through archaeological finds? And how should we interpret Caiaphas' actions considering the political and religious pressures he was under? As we've journeyed through the life and times of Caiaphas, we've seen a man at the crossroads of faith and power, a leader grappling with the turbulent winds of change. Whether you perceive him as a villain who condemned innocence, a pragmatist protecting his people, or a complex figure caught in an impossible situation, one thing is undeniable. Caiaphas's actions shaped the course of history. His story is a stark reminder that the lines between good and evil are often blurred, and that even the most powerful figures are bound by the constraints of their time. Caiaphas challenges us to question our assumptions and to delve deeper into the motivations behind the decisions that alter the world. What do you think of Caiaphas? Was he a villain, a tragic hero, or something else entirely? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's continue this conversation together.